We have our senior homecoming representatives that will be giving you a testimony or telling you something about what God's doing in their lives right now. And um, you're, what you're going to do is uh, tomorrow you'll be voting for homecoming king and queen. The ninth through 12th grade all vote on this. Uh, the seniors were the ones that nominated the uh, senior reps, but everyone votes on it. And so we want you to pay attention. Be respectful, please. Uh, each each uh, person has about a two-minute speech. Limit's supposed to be two minutes, so we're going through this fairly quickly. They understand this, but we don't. We need you guys to be respectful of what the what they're saying up here and understand that some of them have never been in front of a bunch of people before speaking. So I'm sure you would, some of you guys will have this opportunity in the future and we, you would want uh, them to be respectful. Okay, so first of all, who's number one? Anna Martin and every one of you will come up and you will give your name and we'll get going. Hey guys, I'm Anna. Um, I've attended ELCA for 11 years now, and I just wanted to share something that I've been really thinking about lately, which is my purpose. Um, as seniors with ACTs, SATs, senior pictures, and the impending graduation, the question most asked is what are we gonna do after graduation? Most of us answer, I don't have a clue, which gets us thinking about the future, and we start asking what is my purpose, or more importantly, what is God's purpose for my life? John F. Kennedy once said, efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. For all of us, we want to be able to look back one day on our lives and know that our purpose made an impact on, someone life, on someone's life and society as a whole. Even though we are young, the decisions that we make now not only affect us, but future generations. That is why it is important to approach our lives with purpose and direction. Some might ask, why can't I just sit back and relax, but God says we are not designed for that. We are designed for a life that is God-centered, and as we put him first, we can be sure that he will guide, protect us, and direct us in every area of our lives. As we go our separate ways, many of us will go to college and some might choose a different route, but I believe that as we begin this journey, putting God first in our lives and trusting him to guide us, our purpose will become clear. It might not happen today, tomorrow, or next week, but we can be sure that God will reveal his plans for our lives in his perfect time. I wanna thank everyone who voted for me and giving me this amazing opportunity and being able to represent my class of 2017. Thank you. As I begin, I'd like to say, I think some of the best speeches are those that have a great beginning, a memorable end, and not much in between. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet. <laughs> My name is Kat Buckley, and I am honored and grateful to have been part of this. Hold on, oh, I'm doing a sweet job. <laughs> My name is Kat Buckley, and I am honored and grateful to have been chosen as a representative for your homecoming court. I do not have a sentimental or heartwarming story, but I have attended Elka for 13 years and have many fond memories. I asked some of my former teachers to help me by giving me their, some of the best source memories of teaching me. If you ever need a self-esteem boost, go ask one of your former teachers what they remember about you. They will only tell you the good stuff. They're always too nice to tell you the truth. Seriously, I'm honored to be a part of something as special and rich in tradition such as homecoming. Freshmen, I'm just getting to know many of you. Sophomores, I've known most of you since you were babies. Juniors, many of you are my friends and my teammates. Seniors, I like to think of you as well, my dysfunctional family. I would like to end this by saying, don't be in too big of a hurry this week. These are going to be some of your best high school memories, so don't rush by them. Thanks. Um, hi guys, my name's Hannah Miller. Um, this is my fourth year here at Elka, so I came in ninth grade as the new kid, but um, it wasn't so new to me. My mom's job requires her to move whenever and wherever, so change was kind of something that I was familiar with. Um, but coming to Elka was a little difficult feeling welcomed at first, because it kind of felt like everybody had known each other since birth. Um, in this time, the transition was a little bit more of a challenge, but with time, I began to find my place. And um, as 10th grade approached, Elka began to feel a little more like home and things uh, finally started feeling normal. But uh, before I could become too used to things, first semester came to an end and things changed once again um, with the unexpected death of my dad. But um, when someone you love becomes a memory, kind of makes you stop and reflect on the things that are important in life. And 
The things that once seemed so important just now seem so insignificant. Um, the realization that life is short quickly made me realize just how important the people and the experiences in my life really are. Um, but it showed me also that God doesn't waste even the most difficult times, and he uses them to help us grow and to remind us of his presence. Um, but it also often seems like high school is perceived as some sort of popularity contest, but in reality it really isn't. Um, high school isn't about who wins homecoming king, queen, or how many friends you have. It's not about people's perceptions of you or the things that they might say. It's about the experiences that you go through and the mistakes that you make along the way and the people that make it interesting, the friends that become your family. Um, so I just want to say thank you to my senior class for letting me become a part of your family. And um, all these people up here are deserving of this, every single one of them, and I'm just honored to be a part of it. And um, I just want to leave you with this verse from Romans 8, 28, and it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. Thank you. Hi, guys. My name's Isabella. Um, I'm going to try my best not to be nervous because I told myself that I wouldn't be, so... I guess I'll start by telling you guys a little bit about myself. I've been here at Elka since K3, so once I graduate in May, that'll be 15 years, practically my whole life. Um, I play volleyball here. I've been on the volleyball team since, like, middle school, so I guess if all else fails, I'll at least have, like, 12 votes from them. Other than that, um, I'm pretty outdoorsy. I like going new places, meeting new people, doing new things. Um, I love to travel any chance that I get, anywhere that I can. So hopefully next year throughout college, that's something that I'll do a lot of. Um, but while I was thinking of, like, what's the biggest thing that I could say to describe myself right now, like where I am in my life, what I came up with um, is just that I'm a work in progress, and I'm living and learning every day. Um, I'm learning that I don't have to have it all together all the time, that I'll have to, like, know what I'm doing all the time. I'm learning that sometimes the beauty is in not knowing, like just living and figuring it out. I'm also learning that like I don't have to try to be perfect all the time. I don't have to work my way up to God or work my way up to like being good enough for God or for other people even. And um, there's gonna be good days and there's gonna be bad days and just kind of live through it. Um, other than that, like the biggest thing that I'm learning right now is just how to be free and like what it really means to walk in freedom with the Lord. And then um, that's actually the only thing I have on this paper <laughs> is the definition of the word free. It means not under the control or in the power of another, not physically restrained or obstructed, not subject to or constrained by obligations. Um, other than that, this paper is just here to make me look well prepared. Um, yeah, so I'm learning how to walk in freedom. I'm learning that I don't have to set super high expectations for myself, that I don't have to work for my salvation or work to be good enough for God or for other people. And I'm just learning what it really means to be free and to walk in freedom. And that's basically it. Good morning. My name is Jessica. Like any good homecoming speech, I'd like to start by thanking my senior class for nominating me for this position. No matter how much you hear me say, I didn't really want this, I truly appreciate you guys. Have you ever heard this phrase before? Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Chances are you've applied it or will apply it to multiple events in your life. It may be different for you, like playing in your first varsity game or finally getting an A on your test. For me, it was um, accepting Christ for the first time. It's not like I really remember what day this was, but I know it's in the sixth grade. As the preacher spoke, I realized that I was with God, but I wasn't truly with him. There wasn't a major wow factor at the time, nor was there a few years prior when some lady asked me if I wanted to be a Christian, as if I could really understand what that meant. Um, after that, there was really no epic change in my life until high school. We all hear the common speech about a death of a family member that touches all of our hearts. The most drastic event in my life wasn't that serious. December 19, 2013, a few trained professionals decided they were gonna cut open into my heart because it had a few hearts, few holes in it. No big deal. 
that morning, I texted all of my friends, good morning, and I told them that I wish they had a good day. It wasn't very serious for me, but it was nerve-wracking for everybody else. In hindsight, I realized that God had given me peace for some reason that I don't know. But who would want to be stressed out on their birth week? Since my surgery, I noticed that I've gone through several stages in my life. I have forgotten God and gone my own way. But then I realized that my life deteriorates without this peace that he gives me. I noticed that I will never be a perfect Christian who always loves going to church, consistently reads the Bible, or never does anything wrong. Sorry if you were hoping for some major breakthrough in my life, but thank you for the opportunity for sharing with me. My name is Caitlin Jackson. I've attended Elka for seven years now. And first of all, I want to start off by thanking you for nominating me onto your 2017 homecoming court and um, let you know that anyone behind me would be great representatives of Elka. Um, recently, my grandmother passed away, and when reading through one of her journals, I stumbled upon a question that she was asked that said, um, what would you want to be remembered by if anything ever happened to you or when you die? And she responded saying that she wanted to be remembered by how much she cared about people. As I leave Elk, I've thought about the mark that I want to leave and what I want to be remembered by, and I don't think I could have said it any better. I want to be remembered by how much I care about each and every one of you. Because I care about you, I must share with you what has been so profound in my life, and that's my relationship with Christ. With Jesus by my side, I've overcome so many things and realized what peace truly is. Without Jesus, I really don't know how I would get through my day. Life throws so many things at you and tells that you can't handle it, but when walking with Christ, you understand that you can handle everything and that he's there by your side every step of the way. Um, Jesus is the only one who can bring true peace and acceptance. Being in high school is not easy with people judging you and thinking that you're not good enough. People don't have the right to judge you because we all sin in our own ways. It might just be different. Being a Christian doesn't mean having to stay home all weekend and casting judgment on others. I'm a very strong believer in um, going to parties and hanging out with your friends is like in having fun and not giving into worldly temptations is a testimony itself. God doesn't call us to a life of solitude. He wants us to love others and show that we care. I want to show that I care about each and every one of you. If you have any questions or you just want someone to listen to you or help you, please come to me and I would love to help you in any way that I can. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm like shaking, so. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tyler. For the ones that do, you already knew that. Um, the topic of my homecoming speech is supposed to be about my testimony. I apologize in advance for the lack of engaging and captivating details. To make a short story shorter, when I was six, my mom had bought me one of those children's Bible books. You know, the ones with all the colorful pictures of giraffes on Noah's Ark and little David standing up to Goliath. When I got to the part about Jesus dying on the cross, I asked my mom about it, and she asked me if I wanted to be a Christian. I'm sure you probably already know what my answer was. It was yes. Um, so that's how I basically became a Christian, but I don't even think that I really knew that I was a Christian. So like a few years later, I went to a VBS summer camp, and during the prayer, one of the counselors asked the unsaved to raise their hands to accept Jesus. Being confused as to what he was like talking about, I naively raised my hand, and I was taken to a back room with a girl who was like the same age as these guys. So she continued asking me questions of what I knew about Jesus, but I already knew who Jesus was, and I was missing arts and crafts time, so I was kind of unhappy. Not until a few years ago did I really understand what Jesus meant to me. Even now, I still struggle with the same issues. To get to the point, I think I am, I am as well as a lot of other people, have gone throughout life knowing who Jesus is but not knowing him. It's so easy, especially having gone to a Christian school forever, to know all the Bible stories and to say you have a testimony. But to make myself clear again, I am not saying that I did not know Jesus as my personal Savior. I'm just saying that until high school, I did not fully rely on him and have a personal relationship with him. Once I entered high school, I realized that I needed him more than ever. So as for my testimony, it is still being written. And thank you for nominating me for the homecoming court. And like Caitlin said, everybody would be a great person. Uh, good morning. 
Uh, my name is Alex Johnson, and I just wanted to begin my, my speech by saying thank you to all who voted for me. Um, I really appreciate it. It's uh, really an honor to represent you all on homecoming night. But what I wanted to share with you today is more of my story of how I was able to get here upon this stage. Um, this is my sixth year at Elka. I came to Elka in the seventh grade, and I came from the private school in Jodica Road, TCS, or Community Christian. And uh, my, when my mom told me that I was coming here, you know, December of my sixth grade year, you know, I wasn't really necessarily thrilled. Uh, I had, you know, good friends. I'm an old school. You know, I knew my surroundings. I knew how things, you know, the procedure of my old school. Like, I remember my first day here, I had to, like, stand in the back of the lunch line in the cafeteria because I, I didn't know how to, like, get food. You know, I was kind of looking around. I was like, do I get to go up here, like, twice or just once, you know? Um, and one of my most vivid memories from like seven years ago or six years ago was my first day at here and I was in fourth period and I, I said something. It was like the first time that I would like had the courage to speak up that day. I said something and some guy in the front row looked back at me and said, shut up. It was me, you know, um, uh, and I kind of sat there and I was like, wow, you know, this school is just amazing. And I got home that day and I don't remember what me and my mom were really talking about but um, we were talking about something, and we got into an argument, and I was at the top of the stairs, she was at the bottom, and we just started, like, yelling at each other, and all of a sudden, like, I just, like, at the top of my lungs, I screamed out, saying, like, I hate this school, like, the first day. I'm like, I don't want to be here. I want to go back to CCS, you know, like, why did you bring me here? You made the wrong decision in bringing me here. And, I, and what she told me, but then she stopped me. In a calm voice, she told me, Alex, you're not going to understand this now but you will have a better future with this school and you will, be, have, you will have better opportunities with this school than you would at CCS. And of course right then, you know, I didn't have a, a clue what she understood and what she was able to see in this school. So I just ran into my room and shut the door and I was mad at the world for ever making me come here. Well, 2,274 days later, I get to be representing the senior class for homecoming and I think back to what my mom told me almost six years ago, and I realized, you know, that she was right. Um, this school, the teachers in it, my friends, coaches, and all of you who I've had interactions with the past six years um, have taught me lessons that I'm going to carry with myself to college in August. Um, so to wrap, wrap things up, I want to say thank you, uh, how thankful I am to this school, because, you know, it's a lot different than what I could have had and what a lot of people have around the county. Um, all the teachers that I've ever had, uh, you know, you taught me to be diligent and hardworking, and you prepared me for college in ways that I wanted to be, and you've taught me just so well. And lastly, but, and most importantly, I want to thank you. Uh, I want to thank all my friends, the senior class. You know, it's been one heck of a ride these past four years, and I know we all just want to, you know, get out and graduate, but we need to buckle down and get ready for these last couple months. So we can make history, and... Um, being one of the first class, one of the only classes to graduate with all of us walking and graduating in May. <laughs> so um, thank you very much. And again, as Hannah and Caitlin told you, any of these people are great to be representing you all on homecoming night and they all deserve your vote. Thank you very much. Good morning to you guys. I'd like to start this off by saying my name is Andrew Tarver. I've been going to Elka for about four years. I was born February 4th, 1999 in Baltimore, Maryland. I moved down here about 10 years later uh, to McDonough, Georgia, and I've uh, been enjoying life down here. <laughs> uh, throughout my life, I've realized God has always uh, had his hand in my life. He's always provided for me. I've been blessed with two wonderful parents, Lisa and Kevin Tarver. They've always been there for me, everything I need, a uh, roof over my head, clothes on my back, food on my table. But um, so God has always been there for me, but I've noticed that I haven't been there for God. I've never really um, did what he ever wanted me to do. I've noticed that my relationship with God is very weak throughout uh, this speech. When I was writing this speech, I was like, you know, I'm going to write this testimony. It should be good. And it really took me forever because I was like, I can't find any point in my life where I guess I really found myself convicted of anything and that kind of scared me uh then i've noticed throughout what the staff has been telling me my parents been telling me uh preachers really i guess authority figures in my life 
that what I really need to do is I need to get out of the world and I need to uh, focus on Jesus. You can't be in the world and you can't be a Jesus at the same time. You can't consume entertainment that is counterproductive to what Jesus is teaching you. I've noticed that. Um, and as far as the testimony, uh, I really have nothing to say right now because my testimony is still going on. I'd like to thank you guys. Hey, uh, I'm just going to tell y'all a little bit about myself. My name's Caleb Lightsey. I started coming to Elka in the second grade. I've been here for about 10 years. Uh, since I've been at Elka, I played lacrosse, ran cross country, and I'm currently playing in the praise band. Uh, in my free time, I like to build furniture, work on furniture, uh, work on cars, and play music. Uh, my home church is Glen Haven Baptist. I've been there my whole life. Uh, play at some churches, uh, play music around and everything. I uh, was saved at the age of eight years old. I'm very grateful and thankful. I've been able to attend a Christian school my whole life. Uh, our parents sacrificed a lot for us to come to a Christian school. I know that uh, my family has, and I really enjoyed being here. It's a great school. A lot of people complain about it, but we don't know how good we have it made compared to most people. We really do have it pretty good. Um, you get to hear about the Lord all throughout the day. You get freedom of speech. You want to talk about God, you can. You go to a public school, you can't do that. It's uh, all locked down, and really it's uh, it's pretty sad that you can't do that. And we're, we're very, uh, very blessed to be here. And uh, I'm thankful that uh, y'all chose me to be on the homecoming court. Uh, it's our senior year, and I've been around all you folks my whole life, and uh, let's just have a good time. Let's just... Th thanks for uh, electing me to be on the uh, homecoming court, and y'all vote for me. Hey, y'all. My name is Connor Jones. I've been at Elka for 15 years so far. Um, <laughs> I don't feel like telling y'all, like, a whole sob story of why you should vote for me. Um, if you know me well enough, you pretty much know my whole story in detail. And if you don't know me well enough, just come up and ask me, and I'll tell you. But pretty much to sum up my testimony, is like most others um, here, I'd assume, I was raised by two Christian parents in a great uh, Christian home. And uh, in July of 2008, I had that blessing taken from me with the tragic passing of my father. But um, through the support that I received from others and just everyone around me, it helped me find my uh, true strength and colors in the Lord. But um, I don't feel like my past circumstances would describe the person who I am today. I truly believe that the past serves us with lessons and reminders. The past is a path that has led us to where we are today. But you're not the choices you've made. You're not the child that you once were. And you're not the setbacks and bad experiences of yesterday. Is um, Emerson once said, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Uh, you, our peers, for the most part, know mine and everyone else's uh, true colors up here. I'm certain you'll choose the person who best exemplifies this school's true meaning to be homecoming king and queen. It's truly an honor to be up here with these people right now. Uh, thank you all so much for voting for me. Uh, it really means a lot. God bless. Cats by 90. Hello fellow classmates, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joseph Hodges. Some of y'all better know me as Joe Daddy. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm proud to represent Elka in this year's 2017 homecoming court. My goal in this speech is to have no more than two voice cracks and three fumbles. We'll see how this goes. This is my 13th year at Elka, and I've been blessed here. I made some great friends and some great memories. Do y'all remember when the school went on lockdown and everyone was panicking in the hallway? over a gas station robbery. Wasn't that great? <laughs> or do y'all seniors remember how lit prom was last year? Sheesh. But hey, to me, it's gonna be the everyday things I'm gonna miss the most. I mean, I'm gonna miss DB running up the hall screaming, yeah? <laughs> I haven't perfected it yet. Or Byron talking about his snow bunnies. Or Veronica and her loud mouth. Oh wait, I don't miss that at all. <laughs> My testimony is like most of y'all. Born into a Christian family and baptized at an early age. It didn't become personal until the ninth grade when I personally accepted him into my heart and became a lifestyle of mine. 
Growing up in high school it becomes harder and harder to live for him, and I continue to struggle with it today. Personally, I've just learned to be yourself because to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you, make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. We have one time in our lives to be in high school. I can't think of a better place to have spent that time than here at Elka. Dot, dot, dot. Don't y'all just love how great Elka is? Wasn't it great how we had the hardest teacher our freshman year? If you don't know what I'm talking about, lucky you. You might still have a decent GPA. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be the person I am today without support and encouragement I've received here. By constantly providing the best education and pouring the foundation of my faith, I feel best prepared to take on the world when I graduate. Like I said, I'd be honored to represent our class as if anyone on the stage would be. So the main question I leave to you is, when the boats are in and names are called, who best represents Elka as they stand on the 50 yard line? So vote your hearts. Thank you, Elka. Thank you, friends. Thank you, classmates. And one more thing, if Harambe was here from Cincinnati, he vote for Joe Daddy. That's all I gotta say. Before I start, I just want to say that I hate speaking in front of people, so I'm most likely going to fumble and have a few voice cracks, just bear with me. Pretty much all y'all know me, but for those who don't, my name is Matt Hazel. Uh, I've been at Elka since 2003. No matter how many times I say I'm ready to get out of here, I'll definitely miss this place. First off, I want to say thank you to the senior class for nominating me to the homecoming court. It's truly an honor to be up here, and to be honest, any of these guys and girls will make a great king and queen. Now, I was told to give a short testimony, so here it is. Yes, I am Christian. I may not be the best example of one, but I try my best to love those around me just as Jesus did and commanded us to do. My life verse, as some of y'all know, Psalm 23, 4. If y'all don't know the verse, look it up. It's definitely worth the read. While I'm up here in front of y'all, I just want to take a second to share something that I've come to realize my past couple years here. Uh, you need to love the people you've got around you. To my fellow seniors, drop y'all's petty disagreements. I know some things may seem like a big deal now, but I promise you they're not. We've got very little time left here. We're all going to be heading in different directions with a very minute chance of ever seeing each other again. The underclassmen, y'all need to grow up because before you know it, y'all are going to be graduating. Don't spend your time here putting someone else down to make you feel better about yourself or holding on to grudges that don't even matter. Love one another. Make peace with whoever hurt you and if you don't see eye to eye with, because I promise you, whenever you look back on your time here, you don't want to regret not doing so. I see too many people in these hallways stressing out over stuff that could be prevented so easily. Drop the grudges, grow up, and love those around you because there's no guarantee that either of y'all will be here tomorrow. So in conclusion, I want to urge y'all to drop the childish stuff I see y'all doing and just do you. Don't worry what others are doing. If you, don't dis if you don't agree with it, so what? It doesn't give you a reason to make that person feel bad. Love those around you and let them know you love them because like I said before, neither of y'all are guaranteed tomorrow. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to all my new friends, my old friends, uh, the founding fathers, y'all know who you are, uh, my mom, and all those who have stuck by me throughout the years. I'm truly blessed to have every single one of y'all, and I'm going to miss you. Thank you, and go Chargers. Um, hi, for all of y'all who uh, don't know me, I'm Max McBrayer, and this is my 11th year at Elka, um, and it has not been a crazy ride so far. Um, I play just about every sport at Elka at one point except baseball because um, I consider that a pretty solid sport. Uh, sorry, Coach Graham. <laughs> um, also, I've met so many friends over the years, and I just want to thank Elko for the impact it has had on my life. And one thing I would like to specifically thank Elko, Elko for is the Christian Foundation has helped um, form in my life. Luckily, I have been blessed to grow up in a great Christian home where my parents have had me in church as many days as they allow us to go a week. And the age, at the age of nine, I realized I need Jesus and that I'm a sinner not worthy of even being associated with God. And until around 10th grade, I had just been going through the motions of my relationship with Christ. But that year at church camp, I realized something. I realized that if what happens here on earth determines our eternity, like how our eternity will be spent, why not try as hard as possible to go all out for Christ for 80 years or however long you'll live? Because that is nothing compared to eternity. Although I mess up a lot and I try every day to pray to God and ask him to make me die to myself and to glorify him in all my actions, and it's unbelievably hard to do that, but I have realized that in the long, in the long run, it will be worth it, and that has changed my perspective and on the way I try to act every single day. 
In conclusion, I'd like to thank God for all the opportunities he's given me throughout this chapter of my life because I, could, I realized I couldn't have made it this far without him. And I want to thank all the people who voted for me on the homecoming court. It's such an honor. And um, also, I want to uh, give a big thanks to my beautiful and amazing mom back there and my dad, who's not here right now. He's at work. Um, they poured so much into me, and even though I give them crap a bunch and give them a headache, I honestly don't think I could do it without them in my life. So as I finish, I would like to say thank you to all of my amazing friends and teachers for making my 11 years at Elka an amazing experience. Experience, And any one of these guys will make a great choice of king and any of these girls a queen. And thank you all. All right. That was a great job by all of you. Everybody did a wonderful job. I appreciate everybody being respectful of the, what they were going through and some really interesting stuff there, uh, good stuff. Some of it a little more interesting than the others. But um, I want Jake Dallas to come up and pray for us and dismiss us. We will go, as soon as we leave, we'll go to third period. Okay? Thank you. All right, let's pray. Uh, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you all our blessings, God. Uh, please let us have a good day. Please let us have a good week. Uh, please bless this homecoming week. Uh, please let us vote for the person that uh, you most would want to be homecoming king and queen. And um, please let everything we do to be to honor you. Amen.